Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're gonna go over memory mapping and as well as memory mirroring. So with that said, let's do this. Alright, so let's go over our main topic of this video, which is memory mapping and memory mirroring. And let's start off memory mapping since it's already given to us by over here under week two for our very nice uh mirror website. Uh, website which is our main tutorial that we're going through so under week two if you go over here under this diagram you show our memory mapping for their cpu and right under here is your memory mapping for our ppu which then is giving us one more time over here under week three and under processor overview here is the cpu uh, memory mapping which i also have here on this table format right over here under our week books over here which is essentially the same thing. It's not really mentioned what a memory mapping is, but it's pretty much so obvious. Uh, not obvious, but you pretty much get, get a grasp of it, even though you've never uh, given what it is. And even looking at this line over here, you pretty much get an intuition what it is. And right over here, so let's go over this, pretty much this code to say what a, mem a memory mapping is. So here you have a range of values so from zero to 800 hex. And within this range of here, you can access this type of components on so this would be RAM. From 2000 to 2007, you can access the PPU ports. From 4000 to 417, you can use the audio and the controller ports. And here you have a workable program and your game ROM. So you see over here, my memory mapping is pretty much a range of values. That was uh, the NES designers a set, so we can access different components. So here I have so let me, a diagram that was made for uh, under Jared Bilinski. Thankfully, I'm sorry I can pronounce his name. And it's pretty much the same as we have over here. Same as this, but this one has an extra uh, component, which I wasn't aware of, which is the cartridge expansionary, but it's the same thing. So here from zero to 800, which we have over here is our RAM component. So that's this our, this, the RAM that's inside the NES. I don't know why it says workable RAM, because this would be, well, so this is the RAM part for the NES. And this black area over here will be the mirroring. And here is the PPU controller which is from zero to eight hundred, which you see is this tiny area. Area, and here is the mirror from all of this, which is a kind of unnecessary, but you know, there's nothing being used over here. Then you have our APU control from, which is also our controller over here. So here's the same thing, so eight hundred mirroring. So if you see the table. To this diagram, you can see it's almost the same. So here's the mirroring area. So you have the PPU controllers over here. Then you have the mirroring. Then you have our mostly for the APU over here, APU control. Then you have this area over here, which is not under the Nerdy Night Mirror part, which you don't see over here. So here's the controller. This part is not added over here, but that's the expansion uh, cartridge expansion area and from some quick research apparently there are some mappers over here that use this area to store some informations and these are the mappers that use those ranges right over here so uh, or mmc5 which is the most common one and all these other ones which i don't know all of them but you know i know mcc mmc5 is quite popular in some games and they're going to use this expansion area over here according to this over here. Then you have our SRAM over here. And this is static RAM or cartridge RAM. So this is the NES that is inside your console RAM. And this is inside the cartridge RAM. So some extra part for our cartridge. And here's the cartridge ROM, which will be our code for. So that right here will be our game. So that's pretty much what uh, 
memory mapping is any right here under the PPU, which you're going to go over later. But here is our pattern table. So, so for table zero, for table one, your name table, attribute, same thing over here. So here you have three. So there's some mirroring going on over here as well. And as you we have here our background palette or sprite palette and mirroring. So you can this one you can see right over here. In which I like this uh this the weak books part, it does show the mirroring part. So that what memory mapping is. It's pretty much a range of values which you can access different components. So this part out of the way, let me show you what memory mirroring is. All right, and lastly, let's go over memory mirroring. And however, whenever you're mentioning mirroring on the NES, 99% of the time you're gonna be referring to name table mirroring, which is gonna be right the subject over here, but I'll, this time you're gonna be covering memory mirroring, you're gonna cover name table mirroring or mirroring later. And what memory mirroring is, it's pretty much uh, when you have our address range over here, our memory mapping. So here is the NES memory range from for our NES frame from 0 to a 7 FFF. And all these values can be accessed outside of this range over here, this black area, as a form of mirroring. So as it says right over here, the memory more than one range of address in X accessible at more than one address. And this occurred because the full range address, like you have over here, is not fully decoded. So all this value over here, since it's decoded, is gonna be able to access this uh, values of the address over here. So you know my address lines, so forth. Uh, you can read the rest over here, but it says process is no problem. And you can see right over here in the system memories uh, mirroring, which is I'm going to show you guys uh, how it works over here. But essentially, I can access the value on address zero at address eight hundred, a thousand, or eighteen hundred. And here is an example of one hundred seventy three can be accessed as at nine hundred seventy three, a hundred, a thousand, one hundred seventy three, and nineteen seventy three. So think of it as a mirroring happening. So no mirroring, of course it's happening. A pointer, if you ever took Civs plus plus. So the value at address zero, so 800 is a pointer to that. So it's a thousand, so 1800. So all those uh, address ranges can access a value and change the value. So all of them is pointing to the same location, essentially. And to show you guys how that works, I have here uh, Super Smash Bros. 3 running under the massive emulator. Uh, so let's do a little bit of hacking over here. And I'll show you how memory mirroring works as well. So let's begin the game over here. Uh, let me pause the video so there's not a lot of background music happening. But I know that Mario has four life over here that has a value x4. So what I'm gonna do is change his life meter over here. And uh I'm gonna show you that under our different uh mirroring over here since there's only one life over here. Since I know the from our map over here or our range over here I only have a rim value from zero to seven FFF. So let me try to find where his life is, and then we're gonna modify it. So let's begin with that. And to do that, let's go to debug and memory tools. And debug and watch windows. So we're gonna need these two. And you got our control F, we're gonna search and find. And I'm gonna look for the value zero four. And then I'm gonna resume the game so I can see all the values that's happening live over here for this one's better, so let's do that first. So here I found our first value under the address uh, 8B. So all I'm doing is right click and add to watch. So add to watch address 0B. And if I have my watch window somewhere, it's right over here. 
it's added right over here so I have value 4. So I'm doing is going to go from 0 to 7 FFF within the values and look for all the fours that's happening that has inside the memory right now. So let's do the rest of them. So right click and then add to watch. Oh, so let's continue doing that. Uh, so this is the mirroring happening right now. So all this uh, eight AB, eighty AB is the same as zero AB. So we are pretty much uh, went over. So this is the mirroring happening. So right over, already went over. And these are the registers that possesses the value for. So what I'm doing is now is going to resume the game and die in C. Each of these values get decreased by three. And so we then are going to find out. Uh, we can then deduct, remove. So we can right click, remove or del, and remove all the ones that didn't change. So then we're going to find out which one is the corresponding to my life. All right, so Mario Life now is three. Let's go back to our watch window. And you pretty much see there's only one value that got changed over here. So let's delete all of them since they're not the value that we need. So let's go over over here. Add it over here. So here, let's add the value, I don't know, let's say six. Oh, it's too much. Zero. Well, six is too much. Zero, six. There you go. So now it's six. Let me resume the game and see what happens. And here it is. So we know that this is well over here. This is the location for uh my real life. So it's under address zero three uh zero seven three six. So let's uh go over here and just to make sure, let's give I uh, another value over here. Oh, instead of six, uh, let's go. I don't know, let's see, a two, a six. Zero a, there you go, 10. So here you have the value 10. Oh, let me stop the music, music over here. So let's go over and to make this easier. Oh, there's going everywhere over here. I can access this at a thousand. I'm gonna skip this and it's just gonna be easier. I just add a thousand. So the address a thousand, a thousand seven three six. Oh. Thousand seventy six, and you see over here already is the same value over here. So if I come over here, let's resume and edit over here. So let's uh, give the value. Let's say zero seven. I have seven lines, and you see both of them change at the same time. So I can oh, let me stop the music. So as you see over here, I can change this value correspond to the same as that. So let's just die over here and see both of these values decrementing over here. So now you should see a six happening in both of them. And here it is. And that's how memory mirroring actually happens. 
and how you do a simple hack when you're whatever you're playing or NES. So that pretty much covered all the subjects over here. Let me go to back to the mirror. Very nice mirror. Story of four. And I'm gonna go to part three. Beginning next week, which is the our first app. So you're gonna go over a little bit of the code starting on no next week on the next video. So with that said, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.